Abar, yeah, no. Love. Wagwan. <laughs> yeah, Wagwan. Wagwan. Hello guys, welcome back to The Source. Today we have the legendary dancehall artist, Sean Paul, all the way from Kingston, Jamaica. Sean Paul, welcome to The Source on Capital FM, live from Nairobi, Kenya. Where are you at? How are you doing? What are you up to? I'm good. Um, I mean, Jamaica, just come home from getting my son at the summer camp and mm-hmm. go getting some food and yeah. Uh, in between albums right now, the first one that came out earlier this year was Life and Living. Yeah. And the next one coming out. Scorcher. Uh, yeah, Scorcher should be coming out soon, you know. Uh, the first single, will, the second single will be dropping with me and um, Ty Dalla Sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and that is, that is uh, it's called Only Fans and that's going to be August 13th. I released a Scorcher, which is a single from before which is going to be on the album. So I consider that the warm-up single. And then, yeah, the, a, a big look is coming now in August 13 with me and Ty Dalla Sign. That's going to be massive. Can you give us an exact date for Scorcher coming out? The album itself, no. I yeah. think it's going to be later on this year, probably near September. But the the, okay. um, the, the, the single coming out August 13. I know you've already spoken about their live and living album, but it's, it's a more collaborative album and ultimate the ultimate collaborative album. Tell us about all the artists that you worked with on that album. And I know you have a few favorites. Tell us about them. Yeah, man. My first one, the first single that we're still working right now is um, Boom, and that features Busy Signal. Mm-hmm. So uh, everybody know Busy Signal by now, but me and him joining yeah. forces is a big thing. Um, the next uh, people I will big of is more established artists like Buju and me and him have a, a song on there called Crazy. Soon shoot that video. Uh, big up to people like Left Side who is on the album and Junior Gang on the album uh, with Chi Ching Ching. Uh, yeah. People like yes. Ward 21, Suku is on the Governor. album. Yeah, but so all of those names that I called at first was was more yes. established acts that people might know already. Assassin, yes. Mavado. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, the new school has all up on the album, with, which as you said, Big yeah. Up Governor, an intense Skilly Bang Massacre, Squash. All of these names are, are more the younger school or the newer school of the music. Yeah. The reason why I mentioned Governor is because Moneybags is my favorite cat on ah. the album completely. Um, so tell us about just uh, you compiling that album. What does it mean to you? For me, you know, I was trying to show the unity in the dancehall community. I was doing a few work here and there and was going to put out some singles throughout the year. And then I decided that there are good songs and I think they should be our one body of work, one album. Um, you know, we're in a pandemic kind of vibes too, so I figured that people need music and even though I knew I had this other album coming out pretty soon, yes. I, I figured that, you know, we, we need the music and it can help people to just have some positive thoughts. So, put out this album to deal with the unity in the dancehall community. Um, big up to Bugle on the album and sort of Bless and also Rasa Jai. Um, yeah. And as I said, Chi Ching Ching and also people like uh, uh, Jesse Raya, yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, talking about uh, the lockdowns and generally the pandemic and everything, how did yeah. you get through it? How were you able to take care of your mental health? Uh, basically, you know, the family helped me in terms of having a family time that I usually don't have. So um, a lot of time I'm touring more than six months out of the year. So yeah. the school to, to be daddy, you know. That helps yes. a lot, and um, and studio time too. You know, whenever I've ever had a problem in life, I lean up on music, whether it be to listen to or to create it myself. So uh, I got very creative over the past few months and put up these two albums this year. You know, mm-hmm. more than two decades in the industry. How do you keep things fresh? How do you keep things, you know, exciting for us fans? Yes. I know I've. 
I've been a fan from a long time till now and I can say like there's been a journey there's the journey that we keep on listening to Sean Paul and she keeps on giving us good music how are you able to do that well you know I, I just love music I, I have revered um, heroes in the music that I love like Bob Marley, Peter Tash, Jimmy Cliff, Third World Band, um, you know Shabba Ranks, Super Cat all these people came before me with music and influenced me, you know what I mean? Papa San. Uh, so so it's a music that I love and I really put my all into. I want to see the best for it. I don't want to just do it just for the monetary value that it has. It, it's a cultural um, gem to me. It's something yes. that, that really tells you about Jamaica and its life and the people here. So. Um, I'm honored to be a part of the of the industry and I will will be doing that for a long time. You know what I mean? So so that with that mindset is is probably how I've kept so long and I'm looking forward to, to doing more things in the future. You know, my own work, my songs, my albums, but also um, some some production for other people where we're getting ready to put out Chi Ching Ching's second album. His first yeah. album was called um, what's going on, Turning Tables, and this new one is called Radiant. We haven't set a date for Radiant to drop yet, but it's going to be after my album, Scotcher. So we're doing works like that as well, and we're just trying to take part in the history of the music, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Uh, you're doing quite well, and we, we thank you for all that you've done in the industry. Um, talk to us about uh, temperature getting a new life on TikTok. I saw the other day you posted it turned 16 years old and I feel quite old. I feel quite old. <laughs> <laughs> so tell yeah. me, talk to us about just music and social media and uh, temperature. Yeah, it's amazing what, what um, you know music is, is doing on social media or what social media is adding to the experience of music. You know, you can experience it for the first time through a TikTok or an Instagram or, you know, a, a, even someone mentioning something on a Twitter post uh, or you catch a live somewhere and you hear, what's that song in the background? So um, mm -hmm. it's playing a big role. It's playing yeah. a, a huge role. And to know that I am one of the you know, more established artists from a different time frame where these things weren't available and yeah. uh, it's, being, it's still being used, I mean, it talks to the testament of, of the strength of the song and of my genre itself. And I can feel nothing but proud, you know what I mean? not but proud that younger and younger fans keep gravitating towards the music. Um, and I thank you, you know what I mean? I hope that I, I stay fresh for everybody who listen. And yeah. um, I, hope that, I hope that we can find some more music and more TikToks to make, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You've worked with countless artists from Migos, Damian Marley, Keisha Cole, Enrique Iglesias, uh, J Balvin. I can name a whole lot. Um, yeah, man. What has been your most impactful collaboration to date? The most impactful, I would probably say, that's Beyonce. That was, you know, that that garnered a huge amount of fans at that first yeah. uh, instant when that song came out. It came out on both of our albums, so. You know, it was a it was a, a good um, what can I say? It, it was a good combination to, to kind of help both of our fans or both of our fanship to cross over. You know, um, she was from Destiny's Child at the time and was doing her first solo album, so that was a big move for her. And yeah. you know, she's such a disciplined and talented person. And myself, you know, my genre was popping off at the time. Uh, dance our music was really huge, and that's why such as spoken about and talented artists who come and do work with myself. So, and it's been big ever since, and I've had fans that are Beyonce fans ever since, and she the yes. same for, for, for my fans, you know what I mean? So, big tune, big vibe, big sexy song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Talking about uh, collaborations, we have to talk about Go Down There with uh, yes. uh, Spice and Shaggy. First yeah, of all, man. you working on a song together with Shaggy, that is something that we've all been waiting for. Then to yeah, add on yeah, yeah. the Queen of Dancehall, and you made this massive summer hit song. <laughs> Tell us about 
that song. Yes. Yeah, um, Godong, there is a project that Shaggy sent to me and also Spice little after that and we all spoke. You know, Spice had shouted Shaggy and said she wanted to do a tune. Shaggy yeah. had this song in the making and yeah. she finished off her verse and said, wouldn't it be nice to get Sean involved? And yeah. so the two of them came I think the same day and I was like, yeah, it's bad. For me, reading my loan was a good thing for me. So um, you know, I just thank them for including me. Spice's album is coming out sometime in August. You know, big yes. up to her. August 10th. Uh, I cast them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we are we are looking forward to it because she's been waiting to put out the album for such a long time. You know what I mean? Yes. So yes. Big up to her and Shaggy and um the whole vibes, everybody that loves the tune and all the ladies that fit enough to go down and come up back. <laughs> it's a massive tune. We love it here in Kenya. Nice. We can't wait to be out in the clubs and dance to it and get, we'll go down there. Same thing, same yeah. thing, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Talk to us about how you balance the life of being a superstar, a dad, a husband, and you know, just being a good person to your family at large. Um, you know, they, they were good to me. And so I believe to do unto others as they do unto you, you know, and I learned that humility and humbleness through my mom, especially, and, and good people around me, my brother, my wife, um, you know, my brother's family, we're, we're, we're all very close. So I think that's helped to keep me grounded. And even through the big, um, what you can call the accolades or, 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 or the, the great achievements, mm -hmm. I still remember who I am, you know what I mean? And I think that has a lot to do with me starting music at a young age, but I didn't, I wasn't known to the public until I was about 24. So when I became popular all um, island wide, I was about 24 and I think at about age 24, I, I knew myself, I knew who I was and it has kept me grounded for all this time. And I mean, so no matter which step, uh, no matter how big uh, people put me on a pedestal, I appreciate and I love it. Thank you very much, but I also remember who was the real people that really helped to put me on those stairs before that pedestal was put there. You know what I mean? You have to be true to your day ones and, 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 and that's, that has helped me a lot to be a person that is really thankful and true back to his day ones. What are the hard lessons that you've learned from being a superstar? Um, less privacy um, or more fighting to get your privacy. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a trip to the pharmacy is not always just an easy pop in and pop out, you know, so yeah. that, that's one of the big things. But also, um, I've, I've traveled a lot due to my, my career and stardom. Mm -hmm. And it teach me that we are all very much similar, very, 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 very alike. There's a few differences here and there. And so what I drew from that was that since we're so much alike, more than we are different, mm -hmm. we need to find some understanding between each other for the small differences that they are. You know what I mean? Um, those are some things that I've learned uh, just by this career and traveling. I've also learned that there are hypocrites out there. But again, you have to take the positive. Uh, uh, and the positive is that I've met way more positive and, and influential people to me than the negative people and the haters and people like that. So, yeah. That is some good energy, some positive vibes. Uh, no. You've mentioned uh, your collab with Beyonce, Baby Boy. Yeah. And I can say there's a time I saw something online on YouTube. They were saying there's British English, there's American English, and there's Sean Paul English. Well, they <laughs> eat patwa, but you know, you get yeah, what you're saying. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on the impact that reggae, patwa, and dancehall has made worldwide? Oh, undoubtedly, reggae is a rebellious music, a music that talks about love and pain. And so it resonated a lot around the world with a lot of people. It set a lot of people's mind free um, as to thinking about certain topics, um, mm -hmm. apart from being one of them. Uh, you know, the colorism being another one, um, things like uh, injustice, economical situation that 
a lot of people of color are in, it made a lot of people aware of the problems. And that is the first step, because there's sometimes there's people who can make a difference, but they don't, they're not fully aware of the problem. And, and reggae music has been that champion. You know, dancehall music was way more uh, party oriented or fun oriented. And it is where, you know, my generation kind of came in. Although yes. we do have conscious, we do have conscious uh, songs and, and, and utterance in our genre as well. So it is a, it is, it, it was a balanced reggae, so to speak. Um, love that I'm a part of it. Love that each player is, is, is makes their own genuine contribution to these genres. Uh, I call it reggae dance. So for me, it's one, it's one genre. Yeah. Uh, also, also, Patwa is our language. It's broken English and certain African dialects interjected into how we express ourselves on the daily. And it's something that changes. And so, you know, when people make that joke about charm polish and, yeah. and, and English and other other languages, you know, it's yeah. um, it's funny. But I, I always say that you know, big up to just every person in this culture and this country who um, speaks and understands patois and 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 learns the trends and knows how it changes. Uh, like 20 years ago or maybe 30 years ago, Jamaica used to say Irish. We don't say Ari anymore. We say what's the shrimps, which means what's good, what's, what's going shrimps? on. Yeah. Ah, Chris so, Martin has a song that says, you know the shrimps? Yeah. So you know the shrimps, you know the deal, you know what's going on. All right. So same thing. So 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 we have new words that come into play every now and then, yeah. which would be big word or the big sayings and type of stuff like that. Like in the early nineties, we run things, things not run we. Turn into yeah. a song where Sarah's actually used. You know what I mean? Those were phrases that we had in Jamaica here due to you know people making it popular in the music. So uh it's it's our way of showing people who we are, it's our way of showing um you know our likes, our dislikes, our dreams, our aspirations, our failures, our love stories. So uh big up to everybody who loves it. And um yeah, just just one love to everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's the impact throughout the earth has been amazing and uh, for, for someone to come from here where it's more normal to speak like as we do in Patwa for me it's a, it's you know it's it's joining of different cultures throughout the earth and that's a good thing which is something so amazing uh, because even Barack Obama is listening to coffee so yeah. that's a major win um yeah, on to another topic that is slightly controversial well here in kenya where you know it's illegal and i think it's illegal as well in jamaica cannabis business yeah 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 it is, it is. everyone is trying to get their hands into the cannabis business uh with your global appeal is this something that you want to get into and have a business of your own I have um, invested in certain uh, grows where I can develop my own strain and I'm about to soon put out a strain. However, um, you know, with, with all this industrialization of, of things, sometimes, you know, some industries are better when it's remain, uh, what can I say? Not small, but uh, niche. manageable. Yeah, niche. yeah, niche. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some some are. So I'm aware of that, and I'm trying to keep that, um, you know, to 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 to, to help the, the product not to become cardboard, so to speak. You know what I mean? Uh, you yeah. have to care it. You have to take care of it. It's not something that you can just box up and it will stay that way. So, but that, with that being said, I am in the business, but um, not to make money, just to help it flourish and so I can get a good job my own self and um, I, I possibly share with a few peeps. Uh, we do make money by doing those things but again I'm not I'm trying not to make it the money factor overtake the good mm -hmm. growing and, and the benefits that it can give anyone who come in contact contact with it. Mm -hmm. You know I back, back, back sorry back in the day my father yeah. went to prison um, for 
couple of times well for for you know trying to traffic marijuana. And um I'm so now sorry. I see the, yeah, now now I see the same politicians actually charging people a fee to to um you know the same ones who would have locked him up are actually charging a fee to people who want to have their own dispensaries and stuff. And so with that being said, I'm always wearful um, or mindful of, of um, you know, people getting into a business that they didn't like and deemed to be very harmful, which now I see doctors as well and scientists as well saying how beneficial certain parts of the plant are for fighting cancer and for, you know, there's just general euphoria and, and, and um, creativeness that people can get from the plant. Uh, so I'm mindful of getting into business or so to speak getting into bed with the enemy because there have always been people who have locked up friends and families of my own and great mm -hmm. heroes of my own like Peter Tosh uh, mm -hmm. have been locked up many times uh, mm -hmm. due to the same thing. So we have to watch that and make sure that we have our own, um, you know, stipulation when we get into that type of business because they can ruin it, tell the truth. You are a legend in the dancehall industry and a Grammy Award winning artist. And, you know, you've toured all over the world, dance shows, uh, great hits from all around. Uh, tell us about the legacy you'd like to leave behind. And is there anything that you'd want to change about your career so far? Um, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't change anything about my career or my life. You know, your, your life is your life and it's for you to experience and find the balance within all of the turmoil or the great happy things that can happen. Because there, there's many times you're up and you're down, you're up and you're down, it's how you ride the wave. Um, so, uh, what my legacy will leave, I hope that uh, I, I, it will be understood that I'm a hit maker. I hope, yeah. I hope it will be understood that I really do love this genre and try to take part in the history of it and in the betterment of of, uh, of my music for the fans, the patrons that come to the shows, for the musicians that develop it and create it and play it, and mm -hmm. the artists as well, and create more jobs for management and, and, and you know different parts of the industry that can be helpful to help us get out there. I hope that it is shown that you know, I hope that people remember me for that because I've been trying to play my part. Mm -hmm. Talking about playing your part, what do you attribute your success to and what do you have in store for Sean Paul for the next coming years? Um, I attribute a lot of my my um, success to, to, you know, the female population loving the music, the voice and the looks. And, yes! Uh, yeah, the really yes! Nice so big up to the ladies. I, I, I'm a genuine yeah. fan, so big up to all my fans. I'll, I'll, um, I'll take the big you know, up on their behalf. <laughs> yeah, man. And um, yeah, God, God has blessed me with a talent um, and, and, and I worked hard at it. So I give thanks that people recognize it for sure. Amazing. And we love you too, Sean Paul. I remember when you came to Kenya, I was super young, when yeah. Evolution was still a hit. <laughs> What happened then? No, me lose my phone, you know, but I misplaced it. Must be in a hotel, so I was just asking anybody where, where, where. It was not yeah. theft. It was my phone that I I mis misplaced. You, misplaced. you know what I mean? So I was thinking maybe I could set up an award for the phone and people bring back, but nothing never happened still. So big up to Kenya, you know that got enough love. One last question. Talk to us about when you're coming to Kenya. Well, hey, once we're well, done with. With yeah, one, once this is done, which I ask people to tell me every time we say that. When is that, by the way? When, when, when is it going to be done? Whenever that's going to be. <laughs> Pray for us all, and I hope that um, pretty soon I'll be able to come through. I just want to sing something for Kenya right now. Hold on to the dream, Kenya. Hold on. Hold on now, now. Hold on and believe. Though we already won, we still hold on, hold on, hold on now, now. Can ya hold on, hold on, 
Hold on now, now. We still hold on. Although the road is long, we still hold on. We carry on, we still stay strong. Today is long, but tomorrow will come. Hold on, Kenya. Hold on now, now. I will be there as soon as the lockdown them done. Salute, enough love and respect you, Kenya. Amazing, amazing. You sang for us, you give us a big shout out. We can't wait to have you here once the lockdowns are lifted and everything is fine. Hey yo, this is Sean Paul, the girls from Over Rock. Thank you so much for watching The Source. You can log on for more info. You know how we do, blazing them for you. Bless them, dirty, salute.